I'm talking about all this before the big sleep. I mean, there's this, like I say, with the transitioning of this full moon, we're moving into a period of tremendous acceleration and growth. There's many people talking about it in many different ways. And it's all pretty valid in its own way. Just know that that's the general trend. That's where we're headed. And that's why I'm here coaching you into this today because I'm kind of coaching myself right along with you we kind of get it together you know there's leaders on this earth rulers is what they're called in spirit terms and they're not the ones in the government that's pushing people around trying to destroy everybody's consciousness and quash your heart <laughs> it's not those dudes and dudettes uh uh and the lizards behind them. <sighs> and the draconians. Oh my. See, we could go on forever, but we don't. <sighs> but it's not those. The rulers of the earth are those who live here and collate the energies of the collective into themselves in such a way that someone can come by with, say, a ruler and take a measurement on him and know how well humanity's doing or how not well. It's kind of like taking your temperature. <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Morning, morning lung there, baby. I better go smoke another one, huh? <laughs> but that's who the real rulers of the earth are, those by which the earth is measured. You see, and they're invisible to you now. But because you're living in that old paradigm where you pay homage to Caesar, you know, because he still lives. He lives in the White House now, you know. I always said when old baby Bush got elected that that was like uh, Nero getting ready to fiddle Rome down again. Well, he did a pretty good job of it. <laughs> but we don't want to go there. Oh, what's wrong with me this morning, man? And you know, as you return to these innocent eyes, you know, as, as the connection to your heart, these old hard guards fall away, you find enough confidence in yourself, in your innocence, you start to see the results inside and around you. As that happens, then this old guardian can dissolve away, this one that's kept you, your heart protected kept your innocence, your consciousness alive in a subconscious way, kept your heart isolated from the mind. Do you see how protective that is? And if you're going through dark times, it's not an unwise thing. I mean, we could have chosen to have it otherwise, but we chose it that way, so that's the way it is. But as you return to the innocence, your consciousness expands that dissolves that guardian around the heart. It's an illusion anyway. We never needed to be that protected. But yet we created ourselves in fear many times over just so we could experience it. Do you realize how much we're growing here? How much we're changing? How fast we're taking away the veils under which we've lived for thousands of centuries, millions of years. Now you see why I come back this lifetime. Even though I've danced with death many times over, even though it's been gritty and gnarly, and I've always had a difficult time getting by on the financial scene, you know, and, and trying to deal with all the requirements of the earth reality. Man, I've had to give and take so much. But, I mean, I'm not complaining. I mean, shoot. 
Life in the edge, on the edge is where you ought to be. If you're not playing it on the edge, you ain't living right, <laughs> in my humble opinion. Well, for some of us, anyway. Because that's what it takes to jog us along, you know. Without a little hardship to nurture us into some new guidance, it isn't very likely we'd be where we want to be because we tend to want to party and play and, and lollygag and hang back you know what I mean and cling on to what feels good here and let go of what feels bad and, and uh, anyway that ain't always the most productive thing you can be doing so a little trauma a little tragedy an illness something comes along to jog you in hardship you know just plain old financial hardship can be a bitch here man but but it, it goads you into more creative spaces. Once you get out of the the worrisome part, once you get out of the the dark part of it, and realize that it's going to kill you, that's why you got to get out of it. Then you start to find creative solutions to your life. You know, you are kind of tender, kind of almost forced to look inside and deal with this stuff. This dark shit. Before it takes you down, man. So, it's all been part of the process to, to bring us along. And really, in the long run, there's no harm in it. It feels very harmful at times to yourself and to others. You know, and we carry wounds because of it. But we can be letting those go now too. It's again, it's 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 a big joke we've played on ourselves. It's coyote medicine. It's everything back to front, everything as it should not be. <laughs> the worst kind of world you could live in. I mean, you know, there's Calcutta and there's Detroit. There's all these cities that are filled with hell and hard living and all the people in them dealing as they can but there's a light side to it too and these people who have lived in such hardship going to be coming around now some of them will be our brightest stars because when you've been in compression, as I've told you before. Yeah. There's nothing like springing yourself loose into expansion. You go way over here to bring you way over there. You know, it's like pulling back on the slingshot, man, and propelling yourself forward. That's what we've done here. And that's what we're doing now. So you can expect a lot of changes in this old world but more of what we would call the positive sort. As the genuine nature of the human heart starts, to, you're already seeing effects of it. It's just going to amplify now. And people are going to be a lot more decent to one another. Though a lot of folks will be freaking out too because they don't think they're ready. They, they like being asleep, you know. Who doesn't? I mean, you ever find yourself fighting yourself to be awake? I mean, sometimes sleep is natural and feels really good. And so that's what's hanging those folks up. But it ain't going to hold them back. I mean, we it seems like there's all this division and all these different levels of consciousness in existence. Well, I look at it more as just different, different levels of experience, what you've chosen to be. But as consciousness comes into us all naturally we all move in the same direction we all live on the same tree you know we're all branches and flowers and leaves and fruit on the same tree there isn't that great a difference between us and what difference there is is there for experiential purposes we've created it that way we love them differences and we love to play with them and there's nothing wrong with that. But the party is just beginning. 
all the chaos we've known and these who make war upon themselves are finding their way out of here one way or the other. You get it, you don't get it, it don't matter. You will be where you need to be. So if a few people die off, I mean, more or less of natural causes, that's the way it ought to be. And we'll be back with them, we'll be joining with the dead in no time. And they'll be completely different beings than what we knew over on this side. See, the two worlds, as I've told you before, they're coming together. It's the time of new beginning. Stepping in to the new paradigm, which, to be quite honest with you, humanity has lived in before. It was a long time ago, before the devolution and the choice of this round of experience. Holy shit, we can get deep, huh? <laughs> oh, my. That's why we have coffee, man. You know, it sharpens us up, you know. Well, it don't make me any sharper. It makes me a little more laid back. <laughs> a little too laid back for this earth reality. But, you know, honeys, this is what I'm here to tell you. And I always save the best for the end. You gotta hang on for just a little season now. And let this expansion come into you because we're there already. We snuck it in on them when they weren't looking. It's been here since 1994. Now, y'all heard of the principle of the hundredth monkey. Well, in 94, that's when the hundredth human heart, in association with the collective, made this choice to become enlightened again. That its time of experience in the dark world was at a point of completion. And because of that hundredth heart there in 1994, ascension has been assured and it's been coming into place ever since. First, rather slow. It actually even started well before that. But it wasn't cemented into place until that hundredth heart came around in 94. And when it did, it ensured the outcome, not only for Earth and all of her inhabitants, but for those far beyond her, too. We're kind of at a point here on earth at what you would call the center of consciousness of all. That's why we have such a tremendous influence and effect. It's like the center of the heart inside of yourself. It's like that. It's a very influential place. <laughs> so we're here to lighten up, babies, and decide to have some fun. Oh, and hey! If any of you are around on December 7th, that's a Friday, uh, in the evening in Crestone, Colorado, hey, I invite you to come by. We're going to have a little open house, a little rap session with Grandpa. I'm going to videotape it. I'll put it here on my channel. And then a little rock and roll jam, man. I'm telling you, it's going to be a party. Um... Uh, and I expect there'll be more than 13 people there, maybe 25 or 50. But anyway, come on over and let's party down and welcome each other home, back to the heart, the place where we are being. So that's Friday, December 7th, starting at 6 p.m. You can come a little later if you want. My rap session will start at 7, but 6 p.m. is the open house. And that's at the Secret Garden, which is right smack in the middle of downtown Crestone, Colorado. You can't miss it. So uh, just come on in and, and let's party. And dance ourselves into a new reality, okay? I mean, there's fun ways of getting there. We might as well use them. Love you guys. I know I've carried on too long this morning. Can't help it. Just in one of those moods, baby. It gets better. It gets better. This weekend I'll cut one. You know, I've been 
wanting to do one on relationships. Oh, shit. And it's like, uh, because there's so much bullshit there. And we've lived. But, you know, I don't think it's necessary. We're all going through our changes, and we're all seeing that the old way doesn't work. And that only the new way will. And there are those now energetically matching up that start showing us the way, setting the pace on the trail, leading into the new paradigm. So, hell, we don't have to worry about it. Let's just keep talking about love and the practice thereof, okay? And speaking of which, I love you guys. Angel Dog, who's sleeping right here beside me, loves you too. And she's dreaming of you right now and sending you good vibes, just like I am, babies. <laughs> Rock and roll. It's good for your soul. We'll catch you in a bit.